You're listening to the B&H Photography Podcast. For over 40 years, B&H has been the professional source for photography, video, audio, and more. For your favorite gear, news, and reviews, visit us at bnh.com or download the BH app to your iPhone or Android device. Now here's your host, Alan White. Greetings and welcome to the BH Photography Podcast. We're halfway through summer, fall is coming, and that means that over the next few months, we're going to be hearing about all kinds of new cameras, camera systems from Canon, Nikon, and a zillion other camera lens and smartphone manufacturers. Let's not forget them. Today, we're going to throttle back a bit from the march of auto everything electronic camera technologies and focus on the gentler days of analog imaging. Back in the day when I was growing up in Brooklyn, if you walked around with a camera, you were invariably considered a dork. Uh, crossing the schoolyard with the Ashika mat around your neck was an open invitation for beat me up. Uh, me, I was a fast runner. Today, Brooklyn has become a hotbed of photography. At last count, dorks with K1000s, SRT101s, Rollies, and Hasselblad 500s outnumber the hitters 10 to 1. Times have changed. Joining us in the studio today are Kyle DePew, Julian Piscineri. I got it. I got it. I <laughs> kind of. <laughs> close enough. And Michael Armato. Kyle is the founder and general manager of Brooklyn Film Camera. Julian is the lead camera technician and SX-70 expert at Brooklyn Film Camera. And Michael Armato is one of the very knowledgeable sales associates at the B&H Photography Use Department and a man responsible for some of my higher credit card bills. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, and, uh, and we should I keep also mention the more. store, too. Michael ran a, a photo store in Queens for 40 years. Too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with our model uh, photo. Our mo models, photo, and video for you know, in, in, about 45 years we had Queens. the store in Queens. Yeah, yeah and that's like sure. a big name place. So, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, and now he's here. Some people know, some people don't know is that it's more than clerks behind the sales counters uh, at B&H. Some of the people behind the counters have some pretty good accomplishments behind them, and there are some amazing stories. We could do shows just about the people behind the counters here if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. But today, let's stick to uh, Brooklyn Film Camera and the Brooklyn photography scene. What's the background uh, uh, of Brooklyn Film Camera? How did you guys get started? Because you weren't just camera geeks up front. You have a whole history with you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the background is so the the three of us who essentially founded the company used to work for the Impossible Project, now known as Polaroid, of course. Right. Um. So that's that's uh, where we got our roots. Uh, Julian was the led the camera department there for how long was it uh, that you were like so, three years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little more than that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was doing, uh, you know, artist, artist management. Uh, we had a gallery in the, did you guys ever make it over to the Soho location? We had a big gallery there in addition to a store that was uh, company HQ. So we, there was a lot of things going on there, but I was coordinating, uh, you know, programs, uh, doing sales, uh, artist relations, hanging shows, things like that. I guess the story is, uh, you know, when, when I was there, I had a vision that, uh, this, th this model was interesting. And of course they had to be kind of pigeonholed to, uh, you know, just focusing on Polaroid, of course, because that, that was the product. The film was the product. But in any case, yeah, so, so the, the sort of origin story is, uh, you know, the Impossible Projects, uh, then, then we, they sliced off their whole camera division, moved, moved it to the Midwest and, and to Europe. And then there was kind of this opportunity. We had the skills, we had the, the, the knowledge. And so we thought, you know, let's, uh, let's kind of like do this thing and mm -hmm. <laughs> make it, you know, keep it, keep it going in, in New York and, uh, and, 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 and also much, expand. And how begin, much of the model you know, of... Uh of impossible project did you guys follow or, or what, what did you change do you want to take that one julian i mean we we have been like trying to like you know i was working in the camera department so i was just trying to like we, we try to like do the same like model to like you know buy cameras and mm -hmm. like refurbish them mm -hmm. so we had all the knowledge of like doing that how to buy them and like so that we pretty much like reuse that mm -hmm. to like make our own and then yeah. we applied that to also like also like 35 and like 120 camera mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you named the company Brooklyn film camera. Right. So, so, so <laughs> and, tell yeah. me about that a little bit. I mean, the name, I mean, in, in, in full transparency, it was, uh, you know, a name, um, largely, I, I, I think it's a good name. It's got a ring to it, but it was also mm -hmm. like, okay, how can people sort of like find us sure. on the internet? So it's sort of keyword, 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 you know? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. but, uh, I do, I do like the ring to it as oh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of both. Oh, and, it definitely works. It definitely yeah. Works. yeah. And what, what brought everybody to Brooklyn? Us, us personally? Or yeah. The, because, I mean, there's a whole scene that's happening. I just find yeah. it's amazing what that place has turned into. Yeah. So what are your individual stories about it? I mean, I was living in Philadelphia for uh, almost six years uh, after after high school and then um, moved here into New York uh, eight and a half years ago to actually pursue a career in the motion picture industry. So I was, I was trying to work in film and uh, basically got here 
had some friends from from school who hooked me up with some jobs, did the PA thing for a handful of months and went, well, this sucks. You know, was, <laughs> just, I don't know if you ever worked in the industry, but it's terrible. <laughs> very, very like militantly hierarchical and, you know, yeah. a, sort of a, a yeah, terrible yeah. structure to, to operate in. And uh, I qu- quickly moved on from that, began working in restaurants and stuff. I, I guess this isn't, uh, you know, uh, my, my personal story isn't super relevant, but um, yeah, I've been, been in Brooklyn for uh, eight and a half years. So, okay. Yeah. Julian, you? Uh, so I grew up in France and I think I've, I will say like love brought me here, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I've been like living in New York for like the past seven years now. And I think Brooklyn is just, there's so much like going on here and like, yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't have any more like. <laughs> and Michael, how come you never lived in Brooklyn? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm a Queen, Queens guy. What can I tell you? <laughs> through yeah. and through. It's not just a store that you guys have. It sounds yeah. like you, it's building a community around it a little. That's right. a good and, point. That's right. And, yes. And, and yeah, is was that built into the idea from the from the get go, or is that something that kind of transferred just because you're a bunch of guys and girls that you know we're doing that already? You're already kind of a group of photographers and interested in analog and, and film and it grew from that? Or did you guys kind of sit down one day and say, all right, we need to turn this into a business. How do we turn this passion into a business? And, uh, and tell us a little bit about that. It was kind of baked in from the start. I think the, the community aspect, because we, so for the first two years of Brooklyn film camera, we were, um, selling exclusively at the, the Brooklyn fleet, which mm-hmm. is, are you, are you guys familiar with the mm-hmm. Brooklyn? Yeah, fleet? yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, yeah. huge market. Right. Uh, I think current state of it is, you know, a little bit dwindled, uh, to what it was, but when we started it was a huge market, I think they, the uh, per day tracking of people, something in the number of four to 6,000 mm-hmm. people would come through. So, I mean, you're talking just, you know, as we used to call it the circus, cause you'd, you'd literally wake up and this is when the project would sort of lived in my basement. So we'd wake up and get the van and right. park the van and, uh, you know, haul all the shit out of the basement, put it in the back of the van and drive to the flea, set it up. I mean, literally put up a sure, tent, you know, sure. <laughs> two yeah. tables and make it look nice. And, yeah, you know, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then you put on the show and so that, you know, it'd be but this a, is after you stopped working for impossible exactly. or kind of the same time. Okay. This is, yeah. this is post post, post impossible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it'd be seven hours of just nonstop people mm. and just talking, talking, talking. I mean, not a moment of, of sort of calm, you know, which is great. And it, it allowed us to, um, get a name for ourselves and, you know, develop a bit of a social media following. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think I I think I discovered you on Instagram. I think that's where I stumbled on you guys originally, if I'm not mistaken. So that's becoming a a thing. Yeah. It's because Instagram's becoming a a real center of gravity for the project in the digital space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And that presence existed before you even started setting up at Brooklyn Flea, like an online presence. Uh, no, simultaneously. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it all kind of yeah. just said, let's get this going. Yeah. 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 And it was at that point still instant cameras or primarily instant cameras I mean, so it was, or a combination of... It was everything. Yeah. Everything. Always Brooklyn Film Cameras always had a focus on instant mm-hmm. photography um, mm-hmm. on Polaroid uh, exclusively. You know, we, we actually haven't, we sort of like resisted selling Instax cameras. Right. <laughs> um, now, now we do, but uh, you know, what, what we know is Polaroid. So we've always yeah. had a focus squarely on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we started by selling 35, 120, uh, underwater, mm-hmm. pinhole, mm-hmm. stereo, Polaroid. Okay. Well, something yeah. I find really interesting, uh, and, and it's, it's true with the Impossible Project and even with uh, film companies that are starting to come back again right now, is that Polaroid, the body wasn't even cold yet when, <laughs> when the Impossible came about, but a lot of these technologies had to be reinvented. Yeah. It seems like very quickly the technology vanished, the sources of everything. And, and from what I remember reading, you, you guys had a lot of work to do just to get started and it was rough up front there were a lot of consistencies of, of, of color and all this other stuff and i'm just amazed that it vanished so fast it had to be reinvented and i think the same thing's happening now with a lot of these film companies they're buying up all these old machinery and starting yeah. to find old emulsions coming to life but it's not just turning the lights on again and pouring in the goop into the machines it's like you're starting from scratch often yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an intense process. The, to sort of summarize the challenges of the Impossible Project a little bit. I mean, so consider Polaroid, right? Goliath Corporation. I mean, massive, massive. Even in the early two thousands, still selling tons of film, making tons of film. Um, and when you have huge corporations like this, you have littler businesses, right? That kind of help and and live off the uh, sustenance of this large corporation. So in this case, in the case of Polaroid, there are tons of chemical manufacturers specifically who are, who are existing just to provide Polaroid with specific chemistry that they needed. 
So boom, Polaroid goes out of business. Boom, dozens of other tiny companies who are making this stuff also go out of business. And then to compound that, the European Union changed their environmental standard. Uh, I think that was in 2000. Oh, I think yeah. that was in 2007, yeah, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in addition to all that, sort of like laying that on top, uh, the current uh, formulations that they were using were deemed illegal. So they would have had to rework their chemistry. In many ways, this is often kind of pointed to as like the straw that broke the camel's back where Polaroid just went, well, <laughs> all yeah. right, I guess we're calling it, you know, right, <laughs> so right, right. That the millions of dollars that would have took to sort of re-engineer this stuff, would it was, you know, they were already a floundering company at this point in time. Yeah, so, yeah. And I mean, I don't want to get talk too much about Impossible, but they, I know a little bit in the sense that they did revive a few of the factories and a few of the, you know, the actual equipment uh, that, you know, put together the film and... I mean, was that at the heart of at least the instant film resurgence? I mean, obviously Fuji and Instax are doing their thing too, but uh, what, did it take that in, that impossible project to take these companies on to guilt this this movement going back? You think, or am I putting too much credit? No, I think with that's them? just one one teeny correction. They only got one factory, so oh, which okay. was the, the last factory in the world it's right. in, in the Netherlands. But uh, yeah, I think I mean to me, Polaroid. You know, or the Impossible Project. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll say that, I guess. Rather, has always felt sort of like the heartbeat of the instant film resurgence to me mm-hmm. because it's, yeah, it's just there's something about Polaroid. I mean, it's a very, especially here. It's a, you know, Polaroid was an American company. I think it's almost woven into our collective uh, sort of bloodstreams. You know, mm-hmm. if you're if you're a photographer in the U.S., it's like yeah. Polaroid kind of occupies a you know place in your heart for sure. Um, and, uh, so, so what they did was just literally saving a medium, a complete Mm. medium, (laughs) which is, which is not to be, uh, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, the core, or at least the beginning was instant film. I'm at least, I know you're doing other things, but was that getting the most attention like at the booth, uh, or at Brooklyn flea? Was it the instant cameras or was it everything? It's a good question. I mean, it, I think it was because we were kind of you know, pushing it that way. Like, yeah. this, again, this is like what we do. So all of our cameras are totally restored, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we know them very well. Point and shoots get a lot of attention, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of attention. Actually, we're selling more point and shoots than, now than, I mean, hmm. what you say? Uh, the past two years, it's been crazy. Everybody wants a point and shoot. That's know? funny. Yeah. Yeah, Yashika um, T4s are going up the valley oh again and again and yeah. again. Yeah. 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 It was a, a Kendall Jenner, you know, shot one or something, and uh, now they're selling well, for $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally, <laughs> we, can, we could sell like 50 a day if we had them. Yeah. 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 That's how many requests we have now coming Jesus. into B&H. You I'm know, sure. pre- and everybody wants one because they're small and compact. And of course, all these celebrities end up buying one in Instagrams and all of a sudden now everybody wants that one model. And where pro- are people, where yeah. are people processing the film? Oh, I mean, if, if... There's a lot of places in New York. In New York, there's a lot of places. Yeah, there's yeah, lads here. But I mean, yeah, yeah. but let's say, I mean, you have to almost be in the business now to know where these photo labs are. Yeah, Am well, I not yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Well, so people was, come into us, and they, you know, we way. have cards from different labs, right. and, and right. we, you know, we have pretty. You also can go to yeah. like a lot of the generic, you know, like you know, CVS and Dwayne Reed. They but all do have they things. still do that. Uh, they will. You can drop off. All, very few of them actually have labs there, but uh, what they do is they have a central location, and they'll oh, send it all. Send it. And a lot of it is for them is digital already at this point. Of course, you you can't. Not all of them, but a lot of them still do accept film. Okay. Yeah. I would oh. give them and my film place to no, send it to, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your services. Tell us what you guys offer other than, you know, selling refurbished cameras. Well, we're, um, I mean, current services include uh, full restoration services on SX-70s, mm-hmm. uh, SX-70 originals, mm-hmm. SX-70 sonars, SLR 680s. People we bring sp- you theirs and say, hey, it's been sitting around for 20 years. Fix it up for me. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, the vast majority of them were, were getting mailed to mm. us, you know, people, people mail us their cameras really? from all over the world. But, but yeah, we do have in-person drop-offs, of course. Uh, we have, we have open hours on the weekend so people can come by. Um, but that's kind of a, you know, drop in the bucket of what we're receiving from just sort of global shipping right. and, right, you know, right, uh, right, right. national shipping. Yeah. Um, so we restore those cameras. Julian, uh, specifically restores those cameras. And is it a backlog? I mean, you have more than you can handle at this point or... No, I, I will, no, I'm not going to say that, but we get yeah, a lot. Yeah. And then, you know, like, I've, because I, so that's what I was doing at Impossible. So mm-hmm. like I was trained by like a poly, like technician. Mm-hmm. I went to the factory for like a couple of weeks to like learn all of that. So now I'm like, I can just, yeah, do that. But had we, you, had but, you, what was your experience prior to that? Uh, I was just like messing around with a lot of like poly and like taking them apart. And then so they were like, oh, we should like send you over there. And then were you a photographer, that. an engineer? Yeah, or how, I mean, how did you get I'd, to it? Yeah. I'd like. I'd like study graphic design, so it's nothing okay. like that. Right. But yeah. Yeah. I was always curious about it and like, you know, taking pictures. Like, yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've been using a lot of Polaroid before too. So that's, 
Are there still also, new parts available for these cameras? Or is no. it all, uh, are you basically stealing from corpses? And Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what I, we have like some parts from like, you know, our cameras and then with, with all that, we can like put one together and like fix all the issues and like, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And are you sourcing old cameras, dead cameras? Are you looking for them specifically for parts or, or just taking what you get? I mean, when we like look for like cameras online, if we see one that's like in really bad shape and then we can like try to like see what we can save and then we do an offer for like a really cheap price, right. then we can like right. save another one with that. So yeah. You should check out the Brooklyn uh, uh, flea market. They have some old cameras there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But usually they're like really overpriced though. Like people yeah, try true. to like that's sell true. it for way too much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's yeah. not working. Yeah. Yeah. Just are you guys spending a lot of time online trying to source things or is that aspect of it kind of over and, and you have enough attention on yourself that you get them from people? Oh, no, no. I mean, eBay remains our, our largest source of, you know, uh, right. cameras. I mean, cause Always it's just efficient. Something. You can, you can just, okay, we need 30 SX seventies in the next 10 days. Let's mm -hmm. get them, you know, and mm -hmm. you can just kind of put some bids down and they will, they will come. Yeah. Um, yeah, without, without it, it'd be hard to run a project like this without eBay. Actually, right. it's pretty, pretty inter interlaced. And can you put a number on the, nu how many SX seventies were created, were ever built? Is that number out there? Do you know that? Julian? I, I, yeah. I really don't I mean, know. I know there's a lot. There's I mean, a it's lot. It's gotta be yeah. finite, right? I mean, yeah. it's tons, but yeah. eventually. <laughs> I think what a lot of people don't know is, uh, especially if you weren't around when it first came out, that camera was revolutionary in every single manner. It's a single lens oh, reflex yeah. that folds oh, yeah. up, takes instant oh, yeah. pictures. Every bit of technology had to be invented for that particular camera. Yeah, High right. speed motors, batteries had to be developed. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and also Dr. Land did not want people to go out and all of a sudden push a button and the camera's dead. So he put the battery into and every the film. pack of yeah. film. Yeah. 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 Uh, which was, was, it was an amazing thing to do. Sure. And yeah. that I think is also one of the only cameras that's in the Museum of Modern Art. Wow. As a I piece believe of it. art. I believe it. I mean, yeah. it was oh, considered yeah. a yeah. piece of Definitely. industrial yeah. art it's, and it's yeah. on display. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was also the first time that uh, Polaroid had invented integral film, which is the kind of film where you, you need to do nothing. Right. You, yes. take a, you take a picture, right. it ejects. Just, right. There's a layer of mylar between the chemistry, so there's no need to peel it, time it, coat it. You could yeah. just, I mean, consider how mind blowing this was. To, yeah. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's sort of akin to the cell phone, really, or a digital photograph almost. Just point and shoot. Do nothing. It's in your pocket. It's done. You know. Yeah. So we That's all know. We all know that Polaroid. One of the beauties of it was instant pictures. Essentially, it was a forerun of digital. Okay. Now we <laughs> we've, we've gone another step. Today, though, these ancient technologies, in many ways, are are, are still strong. And Instax shows that you can even come out with a new version of it. I find it amazing that considering the state of digital cameras, point and shoots even smartphones, people are still willing to spend 80 cents to $4 every time they push a button just to have <laughs> a mediocre, okay color, grainy print. Well, it depends how you look at it. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> I know. But you have to admit, it is pretty amazing. Every time mm -hmm. you go click, it goes ker -ching. It really, really <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's more about the moment. Like, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. get that, but it, I find yeah. it amazing that yeah. it's that powerful. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. it is p holding a print, giving a print, and sharing it is different than passing around your phone. It is. Yeah. It's two different experiences. Yeah, but you no know, take I mean, just, just to play devil's advocate, I mean, <clears throat> what do you buy? Two hundred dollars, let's say. How, I don't know how much a camera is going to cost you, right? An SX seventy or, or whatever. Two eighty five you know, for most. Okay, yeah. or, or if you go Fuji, cheaper, whatever. Um, and then you buy your film. I mean. To shoot digital or shoot with your phone, what a phone is eight hundred dollars. You need you need a computer. Yeah. You need a digital camera. So you're gonna invest thousands of dollars up front, right, to get all this stuff that we call free. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I, I use the same justifications. I have film cameras sitting here, and and uh, uh, these a lot of film cameras could be bought for almost nothing. And I say to myself that every time I go out shooting film, which I still enjoy doing, it's costing me money. And I'm saying, why are you going to spend money when you can get? Okay, put put the aesthetics aside and all that. You can take phenomenal pictures with your digital gear, with the sure. same lenses and everything else. Yet I still go out and shoot film, and I'm not, I don't have the instant feedback, and that's one of the reasons why I happen to love it. Well, that's um, why I always felt that the uh, yeah. the the instant resurgence is the perfect combination, you know, because you have the nostalgia, and you have the physical artifact, but you also have the immediacy, you know, and that's I think is what kind of, at, um, um, I'd like to get your guys' opinion maybe in the second half of the show on on what is at the heart of the resurgence because you're getting everything. You're getting the instant, you're getting the ability to share, you know, either by passing it to somebody 
or then taking a picture and then of course Instagram and whatever. And uh, and you also have the physical artifact and the and the nostalgia feel. So I think it's kind of all there. It makes sense somehow. I don't know. Yeah, um, for for me too. I think it's it's almost. Uh, I think they they can be a healthy coexistence between the digital and the analog. And you know, I, I sort of live that balance. I mean, there's a place for both. Mm -hmm. You know, in the the way the way I see it, for me, film uh, is sort of something more special. If that makes sense. Like it's not. Um, you know, uh, I, my phone is my most utilized camera, right? It's 2018. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what I'm doing. But, um, you know, yeah, film is, you know, when I'm doing something special or spending an afternoon with a friend who I really like and want to sort of like document this, I'll, I'll bring a film camera. And mm -hmm. it's, these pictures mean more to me somehow. Yeah. Imbued with like uh, the moment and the special quality to it. And I think uh, Instant almost takes that to the next level in a way or something where for me that's like a very social medium. It's a medium in which you're often like, gifting the picture, yeah. right? You know, you kind of look at it together and you go, wow, you should keep this. Right. And then they go, wow, thanks. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's really, it's really magical. Um, yeah. so in any case, yeah, I'm not a digital hater. Just, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I think, no. Like, and, and I think again, maybe we'll leave this for the second half of the show, but I'll just mention this, I, that I do want to get into the idea that I think a lot of us who raised in, in the film world and then were either brought kicking and screaming in the digital or mm. we're early adapters. We look at it as one or the other. And I think people who are younger, they don't see it that way. You yeah, know, they're both yeah. there and they're just, they're, you choose this one, you choose that one, you know? And obviously it's, a, it's about sourcing and finding the cameras and, and getting into it a little bit. But I don't think this, this headspace exists for people who are younger. That's just my they, little pet They kind of grew up in a digital world. So it's like, you know, now we have them coming in. Oh, well, my grandfather gave me his film camera. Yeah. He hadn't used it in 20 years. And it's, mm -hmm. can you check it out, make sure it's working? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, and also makes you a better photographer too because you yeah. think twice yeah. about taking a shot yeah. because, yeah. you know, you're paying for film now. You're yeah. paying to process it. And you only have 36 shots if, if it's 35 millimeter. Where digital, you just pop, pop, pop. And, you know, because you, you can. Mm -hmm. But, you know, film, you're going to think twice about a shot. So I'll know. take a step further. to my 36 exposures. I, I recently did a review, a, a retro review of the that Fuji 617. Okay. <laughs> okay. That I bought from you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I remember I went out and, of course, you know, uh, Despite decades of shooting, I managed to go out and left the, all the film at home. I had one roll in the camera. That, <laughs> oh, now, <laughs> that camera takes four pictures yeah, on a roll of 120. Yeah. So I went out with this beast, and I knew I had four pictures. <laughs> and let me tell you, you, now you get into discipline. Yes. Now you get yeah. into yeah. being a little bit more discretionary about, do yeah. I push that button, or do I go exactly. a little bit further and look exactly. for something better? Exactly. And I'll say that I, added, I got three out of four frames that I used for the story. Okay. And the fourth was okay, but I didn't need it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But yeah, they yeah, forced no, you to just yeah. sharpen up with yeah. your phone. It's like, do, 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 do. Well, it's like, it. or anything, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. 64 so. gigs of, that's a lot of pitches. Mm. Yeah. 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 And now are you guys repairing 35 millimeter cameras too? Only, only very, very simple repairs. You know, uh -huh. we, we, we don't do anything too in depth. We, okay. we sort of outsource the repair of, of these cameras to technicians uh, who we trust mm -hmm. if necessary. Okay. But, but mostly we're just, we're just getting them in. I think it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, the B&H model is similar. You just sort of like test them, measure shutter speeds, aperture movements, declare this is a working camera, right. and then... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so so yeah, so. we same similar model for mm -hmm. us uh, mm -hmm. uh, on everything but Polaroid. All the Polaroids we do are you know thoroughly uh, restored. Okay, I mean we have an in in house technician, but he just repairs the B and H cameras. We don't take stuff in from mm -hmm. right. consumers. Yeah. You know, yeah. I bet you get a lot of people asking though, because oh, yeah. I have people asking me, oh, can, yeah. can you? Yeah, well, we fix have my a couple. Of, we I'm recommend like, no, a couple of places that, that we're comfortable yeah. with and they're yeah. reputable, and yeah, uh, yeah. and that kind of helps them out. But you know, the problem with repairing film cameras is that if you need a part. Yeah. Now you're stuck. Right. Yep. So a lot of yep. places don't want to play with that no more because they got two hours labor into a camera and they can't charge the customer and, you know, they lose two hours labor. Yeah. Because, well, you know, uh, we yeah. do have some good technicians in-house that have performed some neat little miracles. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, yeah. that film advance on that 617 when I first got that camera was broken. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't right. know that yeah. <laughs> when I got it. Um, and yeah. I brought it to a few places that said, we can't even get that part anymore. Don't even, yeah. it's going to be more expensive to prepare the camera and then buy another one. Yeah. Okay. And in-house, I don't know what he did, but yeah. he fixed he, it and I used it. He's pretty amazing, I yeah. tell you, you know, from someone that was not trained for camera repair. Yes. And he's like, you know, mm -hmm. he does stuff that it blows me away. I mean, I, I did camera repair for over 20 years and 
So I bring him something and I says, he goes, yeah, let's leave it with me. I'll come he back has no later. preconceptions. <laughs> yeah, it's like nothing. Yeah. Not, it's like, it's, yeah, okay, I'll take care of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the mad genius in the basement of B&H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you guys accept cryptocurrency. <laughs> we do. Let's sure. talk a little yeah. bit about that. Sure. Yeah. How's that working? Yeah, it's good. I yeah. mean, I mean, this is not you know something that we're uh, you know we're not processing crypto transactions every day or anything right, like that. It's right, sort of right. sort of a few and far between. But um, I'd say, yeah, we started uh, accepting Bitcoin in 2015, and we've probably somewhere in the number of about 20 transactions since then. So okay. you know, not not a lot for right. me. It's almost a gesture of uh, you know just a acceptance of cryptocurrencies. Right. Some something I. I right. think is quite interesting and believe in. So right, yeah, right. I want to support support cool. the ecosystem. All righty. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, any comment? <laughs> 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 uh, and what about the film actually the selling of film? Has that become a bigger part of the business or how's that working? Uh yeah, yeah. I mean we like obviously like sell all the bullet films and uh and like also like one twenty and thirty five, mm-hmm. which is like I feel like growing. Yeah. Like Especially mm-hmm. 35 is like what he was saying about like point and shoots. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. So a lot of people like getting into that as like a first camera and then, yeah, shoot yeah. a lot of yeah. film. Are there dif- different, do you find w- with a lot of the photo enthusiasts, camera enthusiasts, is it still all a 35 millimeter model? Because um, the impression I get is that a lot of these photographers, amateurs, enthusiasts, however you want to call them, are using medium format. And I know that back in the day, medium format meant that you're a professional. Nobody really touched that stuff unless you did it for a living. Now it seems to be well, different. What, what is the, a lot of people start with 35, and now the next step is medium format. So as fast as they come into the store, they sell. I mean, it's you like you used to you have know, like rows of oh, Hasselblads yeah, yeah, there, and yeah, you no, don't exactly. anymore. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, the bigger cameras, nobody wanted them because they were big and heavy, yeah. you know. But now anything medium format sells. I mean, stays a day or two if if it stays that long. I mean, all the popular models and people come in and the prices are getting higher on them and they they're paying the prices for them because you know you can't just go anywhere and buy one. You got to find one and you got to make sure it's good working condition that we make sure it's working. We guarantee it. We give me thirty days to try it out. So you know if you're not happy with it, we'll take it back. You know because mm-hmm. it, it'll it'll sell. It'll the next sell. Day. No one's getting stuck. I mean, with we them. just don't have. Uh, we just. Can't get them. I mean, they come in and they go right away. Yeah. So it's yeah. also something I find pretty interesting is that with all of this interest in film, obviously there's m- there's still money to be made there, and it's growing. If anything, what is the biggest chunk of your guys' business? Is it selling refurbished instant cameras, or SX, is it becoming SX more 70. repairs? SX seventy. SX seventy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the big umbrella. I mean, in repair, sales, you know, everything, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, we're that's the niche of the niche right, <laughs> of running right, a right. film photography camera right. shop in 2018. But uh, yeah, we've, uh, SX70 yeah, who'd have thunk? Like, I mean, right? seriously. Uh, no, I, it's great, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And tell me a little bit about some of the the hurdles and difficulties of opening up a, you know, a brick and mortar shop. I know it's only open for the weekends, right now? Or yeah. do you have plans to open up? Full time, or or you don't want to talk about that? Oh, we got a we got a raised eyebrow. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, that's a whole other ball game. I yeah, mean, we'll, so we'll come back in a year and have that conversation. <laughs> um, but no, we're, but we're, essentially, what you really have is is a repair shop that yes, went yes that opens its doors. Right, it's not really a store. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's a it's a pretty modest studio. I don't. I don't what do they think the square footage is in there? Maybe. I mean, it's quite quite two hundred fifty square feet. Perhaps it's small. Um, is it street level? Is it on, on the first floor? No, it's in a studio building. So the oh, third is. third floor walk up. It's, okay. it's kind of a funny situation. Yeah. You know, you know, everyone out there who's listening, I'm sure there's people who've who've come, but it's uh, you know, you gotta sort of like call us when you get there. Okay. We come down and right. sort of walk you up and it's you it's, throw it's the key off the balcony. Yeah, we throw the terrace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You come to fire escape, you drop a key down, you know, yeah. key in a tube sock. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Um, no, 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 it's, it's not, not quite that grimy, but, uh, we, you know, but yeah, you walk up and it's, it's, um, essentially, uh, we've, we've carved a small, you know, store. It's really, it's cute. Um, but it's, but it's tiny, a uh, whole, we've managed to pack, uh, what would you say, but around 30 cameras in there or something. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, sure. a lot of cameras to sell, mm-hmm. tons of film, but yeah, very like dense, teeny store. And then the, you know, rest of the place is essentially our, our camera shop. So it's, it's just, a, you know, where, where we get our work done and Throw most of our ad- business is, is online. So, so yeah. although you can visit us, you know, we're, there's a big shipping station and we're packing things. And, right. and this right. is, yeah. How many people work in there? Uh, there's five of us right now. Okay. Yeah. And just 
give us the, an address or a location for New Yorkers or anyone who wants to come visit? Yeah, we're, it's a 203 Harrison Place, and mm-hmm. we're just a one-minute walk off the uh, Jefferson L train. Okay, good to know. With the popularity of, of, of film cameras and analog cameras increasing, it's interesting that it's a growing thing, yet there is a very limited source of new cameras, which mm-hmm. means that yeah. the cameras that are out there right now, mm-hmm. they've been increasing in value. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So well, there, obviously, go ahead. Yeah. There, there, there are some projects in the work. There's um, two specifically come to mind. Uh, Bellamy Hunt, who's the yes. guy who runs uh, Japan Camera and Hunter. a guest of the show. He's oh really? Oh, Bellamy's. In oh, here. I, actually, I knew that. I remember when he was coming here. Yeah, yeah he, I think yeah. he hit you guys the next day. He did. I was following that's right. his. Yeah. yeah, that's right. In any case, he, he's declared that he is he's making a point and shoot, 35 millimeter point and shoot. So this is, uh, I think, timeline is sort of uncertain, but uh, that's that's you know. He on was the way. talking about that. Then yeah. I just ha- didn't hear too much going on. And this, there's a, one or two other things going on, right? There's there's a project called Reflex, a new 35 millimeter SLR. Um, that's pretty interesting. And he, I believe, the guy behind that um, is actually in China currently. He's he's in Shenzhen, kind of running around trying to find manufacturers. It's it sounds like a, a real um, incredible process. Actually, I was talking to him about this, and he's just, you know, there's no places that will do all of this in house anymore. So right. he's got to find. The light meter people, the you know the the mirror people, the prism, pentaprism people, you know mm-hmm. the lens guys, and like kind of yeah, like yeah. it's trying to like all. resurrecting an SX seventy company, huh? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, you know, and but it's worth mentioning, Lomography holds it down as oh, you sure. know a company who is still making. Film oh yeah, yeah, they, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forgive me, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're big in that actually. They're yeah. big promoters. Polaroid too, actually. They're they're making new cameras. Yeah. So they made they made uh, two now: the i one, the one step two. And they're sort of teasing a, a third camera. And like mm. Mint, too. You know? Oh, and Mint. Yeah, yeah. and Mint, Mint. Yeah. Mm. Hong Kong company who's, who's making new instant cameras as well. Amazing cameras, actually. They work with Polaroid. They okay. make the SX-70 flash bar and some filter kits and things like that. But they're also making new instant cameras for the Instax systems. Okay, we are going to take a break. And we're going to come back and talk more about analog cameras and the Brooklyn photography scene. Stay tuned. We hope you're enjoying this edition of the B&H Photography Podcast. Send us a tweet at BH Photo Video, hashtag BH Photo Podcast. Okay, we are back. A uh, question for you. Um, why has Brooklyn become sort of a hotbed of, of analog photography? Or maybe maybe I'm, I shouldn't even limit it to analog, but photography... But in particular, analog. I mean, everyone's walking around with film cameras. It's easy to spot somebody from Brooklyn these days. Um, and are there any other communities around the world that you would compare it to that have that same young energy of these older technologies? I mean, I think to to be rather blunt, it's, you know, the gentrification wave in North Brooklyn has a lot to do with it. I mean, it's nobody, you know, film is a luxury product, right? It's not like a you need to shoot film or something. So, um, you, you know, do. I think yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. But you, you do. do. <laughs> um, so I, I think it has a lot to do with that, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, positioned in this, uh, geographical location in which there's, there's lots of, um, you know, Brooklyn, uh, or New York transplants rather. And, you know, people who, uh, are, are very interested in this art form. That said, I mean, there's also a lot of locals who are as well, but I think that's sort of, um, Definitely a, a key aspect of it. There's also spheres of influence that are pretty large within North Brooklyn that are creating this scene. Mm-hmm. So there's um, some that come to mind. Uh, Mono no Aware, you guys familiar with this mm-hmm. this group? They're they're in, in Williamsburg, um, and they're kind of like Brooklyn film camera, but for motion picture. Mm-hmm. So they do all motion picture stuff. Um, they're Kodak's, I think, official distributor in New York, maybe or certainly Brooklyn. Um, and they do a lot of workshops, classes, things like that. Got a lot of people into film, interested in film. There's uh, the Gowanus Darkroom, Bushwick Community Darkroom. These are places where lots of people sort of buzz to and you know work in and uh, definitely foster community there. Um, of course, there's Brooklyn Film Camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, but what do you think? So, and, and we touched on it a bit, a bit earlier, and, and we will dig into it a bit more, but what do you think is at the heart of an analog resurgence or the renaissance in, in analog? And it's not just film either. Obviously, it's in, in other arts as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're right. Yeah, it, it transcends film. It's, you know, people are buying vinyl again, sure. right? You know, people um, yeah. people are playing board games. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big board gamer. Yeah, sure. I can attest and, to that. Yeah. And cards, you know. And cards. Yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. Is it just, uh, I mean, just a counter reaction to everything that's come so fast in terms of the digital revolution? Is that what you... 
Or is that too simple? I think, I think it's something like that. Yeah, there's kind of like a tipping point that's been reached, you know, mm-hmm. for, I mean, for me, I can, the phone I'm, you know, sitting in front of the table on me right now has something like 9,000 <laughs> pictures mm-hmm. or maybe, maybe more, I don't mm-hmm. even know. And it's, uh, you know, so much to the degree where like, I don't go back and look at these images really. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's reached a point where people of, uh, you know, of, uh, younger age are sort of wanting something more than that or wanting to pull away from that. Um, I certainly am, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm much more comforted and this, I'm only speaking for myself here, but I, I really love having tangible prints and having things in a box where yeah. I can, you know, just open it up and go, Hey, look at this. And, T- tangible is you know, a very, very important part of the equation. Yeah. yeah. And, but when you grew up, I mean, um, I don't know how old you guys are, but did your, your parents must have had film cameras around. You must have yeah. grew up with them around. There must be these boxes in your home of yeah. photos when you were kids and stuff like that. And then at a certain point, it got all shelved and, and thought of as just ancient stuff. And now you're looking back at it. Is that going on? Or was there never really a break? I mean, yeah, I was born in 85. So I grew up, you know, first cameras I shot were film cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I value that a lot. I mean, there, there literally is that box mm-hmm. <laughs> my parents' yeah. house yeah, yeah, yeah. that I can, that I can open up and there's, you know, photos of my grandparents sure. and, you know, beautiful photographs. It's actually funny. It kind of makes me cringe when you think about the modern reality of, you know, there's a lot of children being born today, right. In the past like decade, whose photos will be exclusively taken on an iPhone, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. crappy, yeah. crappy mm-hmm. Instagram filters. But yeah. I mean, very low res image, yeah. you know? And the iPhone's capable of, you know, doing a lot, but but um, it's kind of strange that the photographic technology has almost reversed in that way. You know, when I look at pictures of my grandparents, for instance, I mean, these were taken in the, you know, 30s, but the image quality of cameras then was quite high. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you could still print these negatives and you get a tremendous image with beautiful depth of field, you know, high sharpness, uh, good contrast. Um so it's almost like a dissonance that, you know, yeah. that just doesn't exist uh, today, really. Mm-hmm. There's also a, another part of it. Uh, and by the way, if you want to read an interesting book uh, that goes into a lot of it, it's called um, The Revenge of Analog by David Sachs, I believe mm. it's S-A-X. And he gets into a lot of this stuff. And a lot has to do with, with just hands-on. Everything we're doing is automatic, requires no effort, no nothing. You could, you can, you could now talk to something and have it take a picture. Yeah. You don't have to touch it. Everything is is... It's going, it's, yeah. it's kind of scary. It's, yeah. it's a whole different yeah. world. Really However, so. um, an analog camera and like I brought in a whole bunch of, I'm, I'm a, I'm a camera slut. So I brought in a whole bunch of my old <laughs> toys here, uh, my classic cameras with the exception, with one, exception of two of the cameras here, almost all of my film cameras are totally manual and most of them don't even have meters. Yep. Um, a lot of them are range finders and I can't even look through the lens. And to me, the beauty of it is, I mean, I, I have tons of fun with my iPhone and I have tons of fun with my Sony AR7, whatever it is, and all that stuff. However, there's something wonderfully beautiful about going out with a camera in which you have to manually do everything and think about every single step along the way. Because when that picture comes out, then you are a photographer and then you have yes. taken a photograph. Yeah. Very much agreed. Well, the thing is though, and, and you guys have mentioned this, that you're seeing a resurgence in point and shoot film cameras, right? Yeah. So that kind of takes away from this True. argument. And there's yeah. all these people saying, oh, well, I, you know, I want to learn photography from the get go. I want to learn all this stuff. But if people are looking to buy a, a point and shoot film camera, that kind of removes that argument a little bit, right? Because they yeah, just want right. to have a film camera they can go like this with. Right. So, so some, some of this whole idea of, you know, returning to the basics, I find a little questionable. I think I, I see a trend as much as anything. And I don't want to diss it all, but it's just- I think it might I also depend on if you, yeah, I don't know how you define that. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, I can understand yeah. if someone wants to buy a camera that they want to learn and, you know, it's a Pentax and they want to figure out how from the get-go. But if you're telling me, and, uh, and it's not just you guys, but that, that point and shoots are being sold for, and, and, and you know, and they're dropping them off at the CVS- what are we getting here? You know, I right, mean, right. It's so. just like the different way of like, I mean, you're like shooting like a point and shoot and then you, you know, drop off the film and you get it back after. So you look at the picture differently because mm-hmm. you have to wait for them. Mm-hmm. It's not like when you take picture with your iPhone, you can look right. them right after. So there's like a surprise 
you don't know what you really yeah. like too. Do you then, think it's this is real though, or do you think it's just a trend? No, I think it's it's yeah. real. It's yeah. like it's a fun yeah. thing to like. I'm gonna shoot a bunch of pictures like yeah. at yeah. a party, and then yeah. I don't really remember what I took. <laughs> then I get the film back, and I'm like, oh, that's well, awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that anyway. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, sure, but then I still have to wait, and then it's like, yeah. and the quality will be better. Yeah, Michael, like, Michael, like, you, you must know. hear a lot of this at the county. Yeah. You have people coming up to you. So well, what like, are the what are the stories? said before, like you know, the the iPhone, you kind of take these pictures, and you may never look at them again. Yeah, that's you can keep going back to that pack of you know photographs that you just shot and you can keep looking at them and again a lot of people grew up in a digital world so they don't know what that's about so you know I mean I've been doing this over 40 years so I kind of grew up with a camera in my hand because my father was a professional photographer so I was always around it you know but like I said I remember when Polaroid SS70 came out I have a shot of my father with my daughter who was like two years old and mm-hmm. there he is She's, he's got an XX70 taking a picture of her. He hands it to her, and all of a sudden it starts to appear. And the expression on her f- two-year-old right. face was, like, amazing. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's, you know, it's a whole different That's kind of world. Cool. A lot of people miss that. You know, they, they kind of miss that. What's you know? When you see at, at the counter, what's the demographics of the people buying they're, they're, film They're mostly cameras? young. They're mostly yeah. young people. But right. now we're getting people all, all over the world coming mm-hmm. in. You know, it used to be just the students because in New York City they still teach film. And, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Now it's like, oh, do you have any film cameras? You know, I mean, it's always a point and shoot because I think that's where people want to start. But as really? you know, they get really into it, then they want that 35 millimeter camera. And now they want that medium format camera. Yes. And even 4x5 yeah. stuff is amazing. Because they want like more people control, shooting 4x5. Right? Yeah. You know, they want to really take time to take a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you point, know, point just, shoot's kind of the gateway drug into yeah, exactly. <laughs> the harder yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what I found. That, that actually surprises yeah. me. Wow. Actually, yeah. I think it's also worth mentioning that the, you say point and shoot. I, I, I always tell people, when somebody comes to me, I want to buy a camera that's easy to use. I go, go to B&H and buy any of the cameras they sell that all easy to use because the truth is the most expensive camera we sell, the top of the line Hasselblad, you put it into program and oh, autofocus oh, yeah, yeah. and it is a point and shoot. Yes, yeah. um, and a lot of point and shoot cameras also give you the uh, uh, ability and the option of shooting in aperture sh- priority, right. manual yeah. shot, manual controls, all of these yeah. things and override. So yeah, yeah. you can use a point and shoot and again, there are always going to be people who just want to have the, the cool aspect of it and still just push a button without using their brains. Yeah, because yeah. they, you know, they they want a thirty-five millimeter camera that is point and shoot, but they also want if they get more into it, they want to be able to grow with that camera. So, like I said, they're they're some that are you know interchangeable lenses, mm-hmm. they're point and shoots, but they have full manual control. And that's what people want. See, for the students, they have to have a camera with full manual control. In fact, yes. some of the professors don't want them to have even an automatic mode on the camera. So they really make us crazy because that kind of, you know, those cameras go right away. They're buying all your K1000s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You mentioned K1000. How, how, how much can I get for it? <laughs> no, seriously. 5000 no, 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 but seriously, like a, a, a K1000 that's in good working order. On the used market? I mean, yeah. it sort of ranges in, we, we sell them for 200, 200 yeah. if that's any litmus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 As high as 250 yeah. Tell them. People yeah. pay for them. Okay. Yeah. Now you mentioned a K one thousand. I think I think everybody knows it's a Pentax. It's 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 the most generic camera you can get. Well, they made that camera for twenty two years. So yeah, it's yeah. crazy how how long yes. they made that camera. And okay. the lenses all uh, they, will, they will work. They're very super dependable, and they're all mechanical. So if the battery dies, the camera still works. You yes, lose, lose mm-hmm. the light meter. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. know, yeah. but FM FM twos. The hottest that's camera. a Nikon FM2, Nikon right? Nikon FM2. That's I own the many of those. Camera. That's a wonderful that machine. That is the hottest camera. Those mm-hmm. I could literally sell 20, 30 a day if I had them. You know, and then and is the B&H, filters, does you know. B&H look to source cameras or they just take what they get? I mean, they are just they take actively they, they seeking just take what to they find get. these cameras? Yeah, they just take what they get. People just, but people mail them in all the time. Right. I mean, we get a ton of different And cameras, what about you guys? Yeah. Are you guys looking, other than eBay and the general rounds, or are you actively... Trying to find new sources of the keys cameras, or just take what no, you get. Yeah. We 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 buy, you know. So yeah. people bring them in, and we you know we'll buy them on the spot, and pay yeah. cash. Um, yeah. But uh, it's yeah, really, I mean, eBay is our you know, mm-hmm. main source mm-hmm. for eBay taking taking what we need. And Julian, let me ask you, or, or anybody really, yeah. I mean, is is this same movement or whatever you want to call it in in Brooklyn and elsewhere, of course, equal in in Paris or London or well, obviously Tokyo. We've talked about that, and we know that, but. Is it something you're seeing everywhere? Yeah, I feel like it's like all over the world. Like because yeah. we get a lot of customer from like everywhere in the mm-hmm. world that come to us, and also like whenever I go back in France, I like see a lot of people like 
that do the same thing than mm. us. Like, yeah. I mean, I was working at the Impossible Shop for like five months back in like two years ago, and it was the same thing. A lot of people just come in to just either we start like shooting film or just keep on like shooting film, like, yeah. coming like every week to just buy film and mm. shoot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a big community, like all around the world, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was funny because when I had my camera store in the 70s and 80s, every week and every at the end of the week, people would come in to buy film because they were shooting on the weekends. You know, I had primarily wedding and portrait photographers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I always got those people back into the store and, you know, they would see a camera in the showcase, you know. Um, when digital hit, that's it. You yeah. know, they stopped coming into there the store. There wasn't a cycle of coming back in yeah, with the film. Yeah. I, and yeah, it was I like that. a community. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I'd have 20, 30 people in my store on a Friday night that... And they were just talking. It's sort of like you know. a barbershop. Yeah, it just exactly. hangs out the schmooze. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a community center. I, I mean, center. that's one thing I miss the most. Is yeah, I have a yeah, store. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you guys community. Get, and you guys are getting that to some degree at your guys' place, I imagine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah, we. I think we're averaging something in the realm of uh, thirty customers a day on uh, yeah every Saturday and Sunday, which is, isn't a whole lot, right. but we yeah people hang out. It's a very like communal space. You know? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So the camera wise, we talk about the K one thousand. And then there's the Minolta SRT 101s sure. and all those the other. Canon A1s. Canon yeah. A1s. <laughs> oh, so yeah. what are our, our, I want to talk two things. What are some of the more popular cameras that people are looking for when they're wanting to get into analog 35 in medium format? Um, and let's start with that. Well, I mean, everyone wants a Leica. You know, that's that's <laughs> okay. one thing, you know, because they, you know, they're known for, you know, they're, dependability and the optical quality and and uh, you know but they're the, expensive well you know, you know what so but you a, can buy a a, a a user m camera right. for what five or six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars but then you get the lenses and, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and you true. have <laughs> options there too though because right. quite that's honestly true. now you do yeah. you could like now voitlander do. makes that's m mount oh, and yeah. they are and phenomenal at a fraction of the cost yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. you really can go sure. classic analog for a reasonable amount of money. Yeah, I mean anything Nikon from Nikon F, F two, mm -hmm. you know FM, FE, you know those are very popular. There's tons of Nikon lenses out there, yeah. you know, but you know, but they're they're being a lot of people buying them because they're are now adapting them to digital cameras, mm. so we're losing yep. them there. Plus now that people started shooting film again, now they want cam lenses for their film cameras, right? So you know it's uh, you know, but again, there's Zeisses out there. They still make you know manual focus lenses, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and also Voigtlander. So you know, it's uh, you, have, you, you have some options for sure, but not so much in cameras other than Leica. You know, now sleeper you know. systems. I mean, uh, I, I actually have one camera on, on mind and camera system that I think is way undervalued for what you get. Any thoughts from you guys about if somebody was starting and they wanted to you know say. Okay, I don't want a Pentax from an altar or something. I, I want something that's kind of cool, but I don't want to spend a ton of money. What would you recommend? And then I'll tell you what I would recommend. Oh, I'm trying to think what's out there. I mean, because mostly it's Canon A1, you know, Pentax, mm -hmm. Minolta's. A lot of the early Minolta's are, you know, those are pretty. You know, oh yeah, you can mm -hmm. get them pretty pretty good deals on them, and they're super cameras. Yeah, I took a trip in 1971 to Japan with my family, and I came back on a, a Minolta SRT 101 oh, with wow. four lenses for about five hundred dollars. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and you can still get that same money today for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, but yeah. my thought: do you, have, do you have any idea? Any thoughts about cameras? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about one, like the one you like just well, asked. What about like Russian and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Russian cameras yeah. and stuff like that? The Russian I mean, knockoffs are fun. Yeah. 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 Or Fran we France has made a ton of great cameras. I mean, actually, no? not really. I no? don't think there's like any like brands. Like you can find good deals. Well, like, yeah, Lens is yeah. ingenue. Yeah. I mean, those yeah, are like phenomenal. The first, yeah, but the really like old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Peugeot once made a 126 Instamatic. No. Uh, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, if somebody was to come to me and they say they want to buy a camera that uh, they want to get a good film camera system and they don't want to spend a ton of money, I would recommend they look at a Contax G1. That's true. You can buy those bodies for two to three hundred dollars, yeah. and then for a few hundred dollars a pop, you have Carl Zeiss autofocus yeah. lenses. Yeah, and. You could for five hundred dollars, you yeah. can buy a camera and one or two lenses, five or six hundred bucks. Yeah. That's about that's pretty good. That's very true. They've gone up though. Yeah. They, they are, are going up, up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contax G twos now are yeah. going skyrocketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Contax is you know as, me, as soon as we get them in, they sell right away. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I mean, you they, had they, a G two yesterday. I looked this morning; it's gone. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> gone. I saw. I was looking at that. Most know? of the time, they they're gone before they hit my shelf. They'll actually sell on the internet wow. before. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there are people just waiting on the internet, B and H's website, just yeah. to you wait for a cabinet to pop up. You know? <laughs> yeah, I actually have competition. I really, really do. But, yeah. but, what, by what the way, I, if you're listening, I am sitting it out for a few months, folks. So you could exhale. Go ahead, just browse it. <laughs> Taking a break. What about films? What are uh, the popular films you're selling? Uh, remains, you know, Kodak Portrait remains sort of like the the go to color film. I think yeah. for people, uh, Triax uh, really holds as the the black and white standard. Yeah. Um, we do sell Bellamy's film, do mm-hmm. Band Camera Hunter, which mm-hmm. uh, people buy a lot. Um, what else we got going on? Fuji Fuji Film C two hundred. We sell a ton of C two hundred and uh, the, Superior sixteen hundred. Have you tried any of the thirty two hundred speed uh, uh, Kodak film? You know, I actually haven't personally tried it yet. Um, I saw some I, I'm, results. I'm really glad it, to see it come back. It looks like a nice film. I saw some pictures yeah, from it, yeah, and it's yeah. like less grainy than I would imagine it yeah, to be. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. How about slide film? We haven't seen that research. In Ectochrome yet, is coming we? out, right? There's yeah. a new Ectochrome that's being re-released. Yeah, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. That's I don't right. Know when it's coming. They don't know, yeah. yeah. Kodak has been kind of you're really silent about it though. They're making a lot of, you know, it's a big deal yeah. and it sort of announced it and then it's like updates have been, you know, few and far between. But, but you also I, I wonder who they, Kodak is because half the time I wonder if it's just a couple of guys who just bought the name and, you know, right. they're talking from some apartment right. in T-neck or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah. I think I think there's still a thing. They, they've they've done some weird stuff recently. They, we were you know barely talking about cryptocurrency earlier, but mm-hmm. Kodak actually released a crypto coin. Yeah, yeah, we called had them the, on the Kodak show. coin. We had the three executives on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Were, yeah, were they yeah. talking about the, the 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 coin? That's what the show was about. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I've got yeah, I've got to listen yeah. though. The one thing I, I still want to kind of dig into a little bit what you feel about the the analog movement. Uh, there seems to be something going on now that I imagine will fade in a way, or at least will find a plateau. And I, I don't know. I mean, and I feel like I'm out of the loop a little bit, so I'd, I'd love to get input from you guys if you think that, uh, I mean, you may be basing your whole business around it, so you have to be hopeful. But uh, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, when you talk to people, and, and even people that are younger, like teenagers right now, are obviously are getting into it, but and, and there'll be a nice market in the next 10 years. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I mean, to like, yeah, it does feel like appropriate to propagandize this moment, right? And be like, no, film's not going anywhere or something. Right. Like, yeah. Cause this, <laughs> this is obviously in our interest, you know. I think it's always going to um, be there. Whether it'll maintain us or not, uh, I don't know, but there's it, it's always going to be film. Well, yeah, I mean, to, to give an honest answer, I mean, it's, I, I think, uh, you know, you're correct in, in so much as like there is sort of like a bubble, so to speak, right now. Like we're seeing these, you know, T2s sell for, you know, $3,000 on mm-hmm. eBay, for instance, and things. Um, which is sort of untethered to reality, in my mm-hmm. opinion. And uh, but but in any case, yeah, I think I think there's sort of a bubble. There's a big like interest, a big artistic interest right mm-hmm. now. Um, I think this will keep growing for a while. I think you're right that there's sort of will be some point of like oversaturation and just plateau or something like that. But I think I think the the medium of film will always be of interest and will always be a choice that people make. Mm-hmm. Um, I have honestly a lot of trouble imagining myself ever deciding to, to not do it, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people probably feel that way. And simultaneously, wait we're- the, Wait until you see the iPhone 15. <laughs> <laughs> wait until you see. That's in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we're seeing like huge <laughs> manufacturers film Ferrania, you know, the Ferrania plant in yeah, Italy, right? right? They're they're yeah. restarting this massive factory yeah, that, currently. That, yeah, this um, is kind of a, another thing I wanted to get at because it-, it it may be a grassroots thing at a certain point, but there are big companies that are taking notice yeah. and starting reproduction. There are people like putting that, yeah. major money oh, yeah, into millions this. Millions of dollars. You, yeah. you, don't re- you don't start a film company on a whim. That no. is for sure. Mm-hmm. Ferrani is a huge project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, um, uh, like the Florian Caps from, yeah, from, from uh, the Impossible Project. The founder of the Impossible Project has since left uh, Polaroid. But he's now, he's announced, was it two weeks ago or something? That, yeah, something like that. That, uh, that they're going to remake pack film. So we're seeing the death of uh, FP100C before our eyes, right? The mm. last pack film. And he's oh. he's announced that they're going to they're gonna do it. And they've got tangible plans to do it. They've got a team. So, oh, so we're, cool. I feel like, you know, film film is is, yeah. is growing. You know, are to any me, of the emulsions uh, that are coming out now, you just said the film packs. Um, I used to enjoy doing transfer in, uh, uh, emulsion transfers. Are there any Polaroid film or Polaroid type films that you can do that with? Or, or as far as I know, there aren't. Yeah, I mean, with the like the you know the Polaroid integral film, you can like do like emulsion lift. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a different process than like the pillow parts. 
but it's still like something that you can remove from the, the picture. Ah, like okay. Put, you know, use hot water and then like. It's really beautiful, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like watercolors. It's a beautiful palette. I yeah, love it gets it. some yeah. like, yeah, it looks like silk a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I guess it's going to depend on companies coming out with cameras too. I mean, you know, yeah, these, these cameras okay. we're using now are 40, 50 years old and, you know, how much longer will they survive? Well, so, yeah. You know, I think if the yeah. companies are coming out with films, hopefully there's going to be companies coming out with cameras because I think that will make a big difference, you know, where you mm-hmm. could go into a store and buy a brand new film camera now. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we grew up shooting films, so hey. You know, what, why can't uh, the next generation do that, you know? One topic I do want to just touch on briefly uh, that I happen to really find amazing is that uh, the there, there's a little cottage industry of camera builders coming out there, specifically yeah. Dora Goodman, mm. who, who puts out these little custom cameras that I find to be amazing. The Goodman One, I think it's called. Uh, uh, and I recently started following Ethan Moses of Camera Dactyle. He's building these... Uh, um, 3D printed it's a new project, project yeah, four by five, four uh, by fives that uh, are yeah, just yeah, a ton yeah. of fun. And then you've got um, Frank Rubio, who does a lot of work uh, from. He's the camera doctor. Does a lot of stuff for Jeff Berliner. And what is it? Steve Lloyd of Chroma built a beautiful looking four by five monorail camera. Mm. Are there any other people that you know of who are doing these things, saying, you know what, I'm going to just start on my own? Yeah, there's a technician named Nate Weiss. He goes by uh, Instant Options or, or also Option 8. Um, he's he's an amazing technician, uh, camera hacker. I would kind of qualify him as building really incredible stuff. Um, he's built us a handful of cameras at this point. We, we use... Um, like backs for like yeah. 600SC and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Polaroid backs. Um, he's great. Check him out to all the listeners out there. Um my friend Corey Varellen runs a camera shop in Seattle called Rare Medium, and he does. He's an amazing technician on the land camera, specifically land cameras. Um, also does SX70s. Um, he makes some really cool stuff. Super knowledgeable guy. If you, if you have a land camera that needs servicing, he's like the guy. He's an absolute uh, genius at, at uh, Polaroid land cameras. Um, I mean, it's worth mentioning. There's, I mean, there's one that I know in France. They're like making eight by ten, and they're like cool. Oh, Huit par dix, which is eight by ten in in French, mm. and they're like making like uh, like uh, they, they use like a laser cutter mm-hmm. to like build like eight by ten cameras. Mm. So they have like a project also online. There's a Spanish a project called uh, Open SX70, and oh, these yeah, are guys. These yeah. are guys focused on hacking the SX70, making new motherboards for it actually, and uh, you know some some manual piece. So we're we're in touch with them, and we've yeah. been we've been working with them. Uh, Kind of sharing, cool. sharing SX70 knowledge and things like that. It's like yeah. open source and you can program everything. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's also a technician named Matt Widman. Um, goes by S, uh, Second Shot SX70. And he's doing some really neat stuff. He's uh, actually 3D printing parts now for SX70s. And so we're, you know, he's, he's a friend. So we're, we're in touch with him. And, but he's, yeah, 3D printing some stuff. He's, um, he's kind of hacked them in order to be able to shoot iType film, which is the battery less film right. that Polaroid is making now. Um, yeah, a lot of SX-70 tinkers in the world. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's incredible. Well, we could talk all day here if we want to. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no toys about it. So if uh, uh, our listeners want to find out a little bit more about uh, Brooklyn Film Camera, what should they be doing? Uh, the best thing to do would be to go to brooklynfilmcamera.com. That's, mm-hmm. our, that's our website. You can buy from us there. You can learn more about us there. Um, if you're on Instagram, uh, we are at Brooklyn Film Camera. Um, that's our main social media platform. We're also on Facebook. You can find us there. Um, Instagram is kind of the, the the main place the project is living digitally. Um, and if you're in New York, you should just come and visit us. Um, so we're, you can go to the website for directions and information. But uh, we're we're just in Bushwick. Kind of and also, do keep in mind that if 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 listeners are interested and they really cannot afford a like or a Hasselblad or anything like that. You guys do sell these lovely little lapel pins of reproductions <laughs> for ten or twelve dollars. That's that right. Are, so yeah. you can actually walk around the Leica around, yeah. you know, yeah. sort of. <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you guys go to? I mean, I saw you at the Penumbra. I saw you at the Penumbra event the other day. But do you guys get out there and go to camera events, or are you going to do something at Photo Plus, or is that just a whole other world and you prefer not to deal with that? We. Well, we yeah, we do. Yeah. We do it. We do it with um with backpacks and business cards. You know, okay. yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. I remember asking. Um, we, we actually inquired with uh, Photo Plus about how much a small table would be uh, a couple of years back, and right. it was something something in the realm of you know twelve thousand right. dollars. Right. And, uh, you said we prefer to open a store. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so and, what, you, and what's the problem with that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I wish we had that kind of marketing budget. You know, they um, take right. cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah. in that case, yeah. You could just yeah, just you know. <laughs> 
Um, so cool. a lot of film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I did want to throw out one little shout out to uh, a past guest who has a show going on right now. Oh yes, and that's Ziza Cruz Bacani, who's uh, a documentary and and photojournalist. Uh, who's got a show in Brooklyn at a place called the Open Source Gallery on, on 17th Street. I went to it last night. It was a great show and a great little gallery. Uh, and she's and, a very talented young lady. Great uh, photographer great. And that from gonna, Hong Kong, I believe. She's, she's Filipina. She's Filipina. And based in Hong Kong. And uh, and that show's going to be up for a month. So take a look at Open Source yep. Gallery. Well worth seeing. Mm -hmm. it. Um, cool. Also, let's a little reminder here that the b and Photography Podcast Fujifilm X-H1 Sweepstakes is still open. If you would like a chance of winning a Fujifilm X-H1 camera with a Fujinon XF 35mm F2 RWR lens or a Fujifilm X-E3 camera with a Fujinon XF 23mm F2 RWR lens, you could be a winner. Our sweepstakes is going on from Thursday, July 26th, which is behind us, through Wednesday, August 15th, which is ahead of us. Two winners are going to be picked at random from all of the received entries and announced on a podcast on Thursday, August 23rd in the year 2018. You have two chances to win two cameras. Go to the B&H Facebook page or our podcast landing page for details. All you have to do is rate and subscribe to the B&H Photography Podcast on Apple Podcast, iTunes, or your favorite podcast app. Also, if you plan on stopping by the B&H Superstore and you are interested in film, analog cameras, or any kind of used cameras, do stop by and feel free to say hi to Michael Armato, who is our guest today. Uh, Michael is really a walking treasure uh, of information and knowledge, and uh, I've often referred to him just in casual schmoozing when I'm seriously buying. Uh, he's terrific to talk to. He knows his stuff like everybody else behind the counters here. So that's a wrap on the show. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Julian. And thank you, Michael. And on behalf of John, Jason, and myself, thank you so much for tuning in today. 